I would like to thank the Rotterdam Port Promotion Council for kindly hosting and assisting us in their Rotterdam studio. So here we are for yet another Brexit webinar, just four weeks before reality kicks in. Brexit has kept us on our toes for over four years, and it still does, thanks to the politicians on both sides of the North Sea. We will do a very quick political update and then move on to what really matters, the business reality. While we are preparing for Brexit, the negotiators are still making a lot of noise. We keep being told that 95% of the deal is agreed. However, the three most contentious subjects, fishing rights, competition rules, and the governance of the agreement remains deal breakers for now. Will Boris Johnson strike a last minute deal with Ursula von der Leyen if Barnier and Frost can't? After the countless hours of negotiation, a deal could be made quickly once these two are willing to make compromises at the highest level. The consequences, both the practical ones and the legal ones, are pretty clear to both sides. The million euro question or the million pound question remains how to agree on what is considered a fair result on both sides of the electorate. But enough of this speculation. This morning we will concentrate on what we do know I dare to say that we are ready at the Dutch border. Branch organizations, the business community and governments have worked closely together with PortBase on one chain-wide solution, get ready for Brexit. However, PortBase only offers the technical solution. If you have no correct customs document and if you do not make a digital pre-notification, your goods will not be able to access any terminal. So our ports are ready, but what about the requirements at the UK border? And how well prepared are our hinterland parties? Have proper agreements been made in to who does what? And does everyone really understand how the solution works? The sense of urgency still seems to be missing in part of the hinterland. Why? Is it due to COVID-19? Is it due to the ongoing negotiations and false expectations? It doesn't really matter. On January 1st, customs formalities will apply to everyone who imports from or exports to the UK and the other way around, of course. So only two words matter, get ready. Use the very last chance to consult with your customs agent and get informed thoroughly. This really is the final countdown. And after four years of preparations, you do not want to end up at the back of the queue, uncertain of who will help you and when to get your goods moving. Now, the good news is that today we have experts in the house to offer you knowledge, service, and reassurance for those four last remaining weeks and after that. Experts who will deconstruct the border operating model for you. Experts who are part of our own business community in the port of Rotterdam and in the United Kingdom. So let's get cracking and introduce them to you. In our first segment, we will have two speakers. We will kick up with Mark Woodard. Today, Mark is our guest from across the North Sea. He started with Norfolk Line in London and Chatham in the late 70s before taking on several managerial positions in Denmark and later on returning to the UK to Felixstowe for the UK Benelux routes. Norfolk is now, of course, part of DFDS since 2010. And today, Mark is the UK manager agency South, responsible for Felixstowe route operations, as well as trailer repair and transshipment facilities. He will be joined by his colleague, Lucien Steutefalk. Lucien worked for various freight forwarders and transport companies before joining DFDS in 2014. DFDS Seaways has a route network on the North Sea. They offer various locations with a fleet of Roro and Ropex vessels. Today, Lucien is head of customer and operational services, UK and the Netherlands. 
And then in our second segment, we will hear from our third guest, Stefan Verhagen. After 70 years in logistic business functions, Stefan joined TLN Phoenix or TLN Phoenix with roughly 5,000 members in 2017. Stefan's expertise includes customs affairs and border control topics. He acts as their focal point for Dutch customs, as well as the Dutch Food and Customer Product Safety Authority, also known as the NVWA. And Stefan is present in the RPPC studio today. Now, some of the questions we will be dealing with today are, what is the latest update on the border operating model? What are the hard conditions to meet? How will the DFDS UK East Coast ports operate after the period? And last but not least, how do forwarders deal with the late developments of this border operating model? And how will they service and unburden customers both ways as of the 1st of January 2021? That's a lot to cover, so I suggest we start with our first segment. I would like to invite our digital speakers, Mark and Lucien, to take over now and our audience to switch off all cameras and microphones. Please report your questions and remarks in the chat so we can deal with them in the Q&A segment later on. So Mark and Lucien, it's up to you now. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for taking the time and joining this seminar, giving us a chance to take you through how the East Coast ports for DFDS will handle the post-transition border controls and the consequent impact that that will have on importing and exporting between the UK and the EU. I'm just going to put up on my screen a presentation for you. <coughs> and hopefully that is now coming through. Before we go into the border model, it's worthwhile just recapping where we are on the actual politics of this. It has to be remembered that when people talk about will Brexit happen, what's happening after Brexit, etc., the UK has already left the EU. It left the EU on the 31st of January 2020 under what we call Brexit Day. And as such, the UK has not had any MPs represented it in the European Parliament, no commissioners has no say in the rules, nor any right to attend summits other than as a guest. However, regardless of that, for most of us, we don't know much difference. Things run along pretty much as they do, and we take things pretty much for granted. And that is simply because the UK is in the transition period. This could have been extended, but the UK has not requested any extension. And indeed, the Johnson government put into law a legal statute that the UK would not request that extension. Therefore, that position remains today that as of the 31st of December, the UK is leaving the transition period and will no longer be a member of the customs union nor the single market. So then we come to the free trade deal. People talk about the free trade deal and ask, will that mean things? Will we not have border controls? Indeed, will we stay as we are today? But it Again, we must remember that whatever comes out of an agreement, whether we get a free trade agreement with tariff free quotas, the UK will still have left the single market. It will still have left the customs union. So whatever is agreed, be it a free trade agreement or on a simple world trade organization trading relationship, the EU is going to treat the UK as a third country and will implement border controls. And the UK will also introduce its own controls. So at the risk of being repetitive, remember, we have 28 days to go. The current negotiations are focused on the future trade and relationship. We all hope that we get the quota free, the tariff free, but regardless of that, we have to be prepared now for customs declarations. If we're not prepared, as Edwin has already indicated, and I apologise for being repetitive on this, but it is so important, cargo units will be placed on hold at ports and drivers will be refused access to the terminal. So let's have a look at how the UK is going to implement those border controls. As is probably general knowledge now, the UK is doing it in three stages, running from January through to July. 
the first stage, all exports from the UK, the eastbound, will be subject to full customs clearance formalities from day one. This includes empty units and empty packaging. And of course, the loaded cargo on arrival into the EU will be treated as a third country's cargo. For the imports into the UK, traders who are importing using the importing standard goods such as clothes, electronics, anything through to the non uncontrolled goods such as tobacco and alcohol will have up to six months to make deferred declarations, provided they have the simplified procedures in place. And therefore the duties, if there are duties, can be paid at a later stage. April the 1st, things start hotting up. Anyone trading with animal origin goods or plants or regulated plants will be required to make the pre-notification along with relevant health documentation. The good news is that any physical checks can still take place at the final destination as opposed to the border crossing, the port of arrival. And then the real big bang, so to speak, July the 1st, everybody trading in goods from the EU will have to make the full declarations, will have to pay the full amount of duty or any tariffs that may be valid at the point of importation and full safety and security declarations will be required. Which brings us on to the East Coast ports that DFDS operate in, Felixstowe, Immingham and Newcastle. A lot of people will talk about GVMS as a border model, but in other ports that I'm talking about here, the existing model is the temporary storage facility known as the TSF. Now it's important to delineate between the two because this is an established, supported and tested model. It's the model which is used today for the UK's imports from 50% of its total cargo from the rest of the world. So it works and it's reliable. The question for the future on that is not whether it's going to work or not. It's a question of whether the impact of millions more declarations will slow the system down or the worry that it might fall over completely. That is a worst case scenario. But unlike GVMS, it is in existence and it works. The goods vehicle movement system is being created for the ports such as Dover and then to comply with the Northern Ireland Protocol. The big difference, of course, is the TSF does not require to be pre-declared or pre-cleared prior to the goods arriving into the UK or to loading at the EU port. So there is more flexibility on that. <coughs> in Nimingham, Felixstowe and Newcastle, border crossing points are already in place or are in the process of being set up. And the key phase on these ports is the inventory system Destinate. And the simplest way to think of Destinate, if you're not familiar with that, is it's a port community system, and it's the closest thing to a mirror image in the UK of what port base is in Holland today. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Any bookings that are made with DFDS, the goods that are under customs control are therefore automatically transmitted and linked into that system, which in turn links into the port systems the operators and the customs agent and all those are linked direct to Her Majesty's revenue, the chief system which processes customs clearances. So from there, let's take a quick look at the exporting guide from the UK post transition. For DFDS, this is the mandatory information that will be required to process a booking to get a unit onto the terminal and to get it shipped. Some of it is pretty obvious, some of it is in use today, but the single most important difference will be that each unit will need to be export cleared and that will require a UCR, which is what is given once the declaration has been made into chiefs. Whose role is what for the exports after January? Well, the customs agent, the declarant, Provided that the goods have been declared into chiefs, then that UCR is immediately raised and that UCR will be passed back to the trailer operator to ensure it contains that when it comes into DFDS. Along with the relevant custom status, everything is then from there automated and DFDS transmits that into the inventory system and can amend if required should a booking change afterwards. We see here a flow chart, which I won't. What's happened there? Sorry about this. We'll get back to where we were.
Yeah, we see a flow chart which takes you through from the actual declaration of the exit summary and from the loading point right the way through to the vehicle arriving at the terminal. And it illustrates what I've repeated just now. And the key point here is that provided that UCR is with that declaration linked to that trailer, then the trailer will get onto the terminal. And from there, I have to apologize for this. The slide doesn't seem to want to do what it should be doing. From there, the automatic process takes over. The trailer is shown at the terminal. The terminal systems take it through and it can be loaded to the vessel. Or alternatively, if the customs have called it for hold and an exam will be made, that is signaled, the exam takes place, the trailer is cleared, it is placed on the vessel and it's shipped. Once it's shipped, this is updated in Destinate and all the stakeholders are advised accordingly. Of course, once it's actually left the UK, it's been exported, it then becomes an import into Holland, which Lucien is your queue. Uh, Lucien, you start on mute. I had such a nice story already. Sorry for that. <laughs> sorry for that. Thank you again, Mark uh, and Edwin. Sorry uh, <laughs> that I was on mute. Um, we um, in Vlaanderen and Amuiden also have a temporary storage facility status on our terminal, um, and and have acquired all um, all required licenses from Dutch custom Dutch customs in in order to operate as from the first of Jan 2021. Um, but like uh, Edwin already did, I also would like to emphasize the cooperation between uh, uh, all the ferry operators. Um, uh, port base, especially customs, really uh, uh, brands, organizations, etc. Because that has been, uh, we have worked, uh, we had did a, a huge job in the last three years in order to build this model, uh, in order to uh, try to 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 maintain the happy flow for the Dutch ports uh, for exports and imports in the UK. Um, can you go to the next slide, please, Mark? Do you have that, Lucien? No, I haven't. Do you see it then? Yeah. That's oh, strange. I don't. I don't. Well, um, I've just lost sight, and that's also what is your role uh, in imports uh, in into the Holland uh, into Holland into the Dutch terminals um, um, from the UK, and also based on the the, the customer role DFDS and the, the customs broker. You have to make an import declaration uh, uh, for uh, for get released from the terminal out of Flying or Amuiden. Um, making this import declaration that will give you a, a document number, which is called the MRM, the Movement Reference Number, which you needs to which needed to be processed in port base. And for imports, the port base module uh, is called the notification of the import declaration. In Dutch, it's called the MIT. There you need to uh, they, there you need as a customer, an importer, or the holier need to process the data in order to get your unit released from the terminal. Um, of course, you have already made a booking into the in, from from the UK uh, into Holland, and there you will have a unique reference number, uh, the DFDS re re unique reference number, together with the data from the document, the MRM number, the document type and the release number and the unit number, you need to process the uh, the MIT module in port base. Once you have done that, you will uh, have a release from the, from the gate. So in fact, you have the green light in order to leave the terminal, unless the unit might be selected for a, a customs inspection. Um, 
it's very important that this MIT is, is done ASAP uh, when the unit is discharged, although it might, of course, cause a congestion at the terminal and the congestion at the uh, at the uh, at the gatehouse uh, and the entry and the exit uh, roads to and from the terminal. Um, also, to make clear, when we have once we uh, sailed out of the UK, we will tally the vessel and we will do as a ferry operator. And that's a little bit different than the channel or the Euro tunnel. We will do the entry summary declaration and the administration in the uh, temporary storage facility as a ferry terminal. And we do that for all manifested cargo. So we do that for both accompanied and unaccompanied uh, uh, units on the manifest. And so in order to be clear. Uh, how can you ever this but it's very important can you go to the next slide i don't see the slides to be honest you now have the next slide coming through okay um if you go to this process flow i would like uh, the, the, the 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 top already um discussed by mark or presented by mark i would like to go through the uh, the yellow part um uh, it's more or less what we just what we just presented Important to know is how can you see as a planner when the the import declaration in port base has been uh, has been done or the import documentation has been processed in port base. Um, you can see that uh, in port base uh, there is a import status module where you can uh, with, a, with a traffic light to say so where it is on, on, on green you can leave the terminal but you can also see that in our online booking portal my freight or uh, on, if you have an EDI connection on your EDI connection. We also have a driver app available where a driver can uh, type in his uh, in on his mobile device it should be it has to be of course a smartphone. He can uh, he can enter the release number and then he sees whether this uh, import documentation uh, declaration has been done or not. Um, also, what differs from from nowadays is that as from the first of January, and that is different than uh, in the UK. If we are talking about veterinarian or 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 or, or phytosanitary, so animal or plant products importing in Holland you need to do an inspection you need to make an, an appointment for an inspection at the border control post. Um, Lucy, can I just pause you one second I apologize um, I'm getting messages that the slides are frozen uh, two slides back at number 11. Yeah I, Edward, I don't know if that on the technical side anything could be done to take that through. I try to uh, control them now hopefully see yeah. slide 13. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, OK, OK, I'll take over. Thank you, Jacqueline. Cheers. Thank you. Um, so for those products, you need to have a you need to make an appointment with a border control post, uh, uh, which is for Vlaanderen. Uh, uh, the nearest ones are at the Wauwenhaag terminal, a little bit depending on the origin or the, or the product. Uh, you can do the, the inspection at the terminal or in, at, at the Wauwenhaag uh, border control post or at the Maasvlakte. Uh, but most of the products can be done at the Mauerhof border control post. Um, that's something which is not in our control or not to say so, um, our responsibility, that's the resp responsibility of the importer to do. So once you have done your MIT, uh, once you have processed your MIT uh, from the terminal, you can leave the terminal if there is no, in if there is no customs inspection. Uh, Jacqueline, can you go to the next slide, please? And the next one, I would like to guide you through now the uh, the export process uh, from Holland into the UK. Um, uh, this is also what, me what Mark mentioned is more of both for export and imports. We need more data regarding the commodity and the cargo uh, description. Nowadays, uh, it is in fact, uh, you, you are, it's allowed that you just book a, uh, a, a unit as general cargo or groupage or, or groupage and with a kind of default weight in, the, in, in, your, in your TMS system. That is not allowed after the uh, transition period, so after the 1st of uh, January 2021. We do need to know the packing time, the number of packages, a full commodity description um, that can also be based on the harmonized customs code, the four digit, digit harmonized customs code that is not mandatory yet by Dutch customs, uh, but it might be easier to use the HS code in, instead of typing in a full commodity description. Uh, the crossweight is important. The crossweight also needs to correspond with the document. Uh, 
So uh, we have now uh, the transit documents we do nowadays, for example, there are a lot of discrepancies with the weights and then customs will knock on our doors in order to uh, to send some proof what the exact weight is. Important that it is corresponding with the uh, with the uh, uh, the document. Equipment number and also this is what Mark mentioned, custom status. Um, for exports into the UK, we really would like to know a prior shipment because we would like to manifest if a importer has a simplified procedure in place so that he does not need to go through the port community system in the UK destinate. So then we will uh, manifest the cargo as C status and then there will be no hold on the terminal and you can leave directly the port of entry in the UK. So either Felixstowe, Newcastle or Immingham. Um, if it is not manifested as C status, it will be manifested as we call it N status and then it needs to be processed through the port community system uh, destinate in the UK. Next slide, please. So also, what is your role uh, in exports from Holland into uh, into uh, the UK? It's in fact a, little, uh, this, uh, it's a repeat of the import, a little bit different procedure. And you make you have to make a uh, declaration into your local uh, uh, custom system. Um, you need to provide the MREM number because uh, in, uh, for import you have the MIT, uh, the import declaration, the, uh, the import declaration from port base. For export you have the MET, the export declaration notification in port base. And there also you need to process the MREM number, the, 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 uh, the document type, the unit ID, and our release number, but what we will give you once you have made your booking. And that is a unique release number, a unique number. You need to submit those that that data those data into port base in order to get access on the terminal. If that is not done, you will not get access to the terminal. And we also highly, I would really would like to emphasize that it is very important for planners to check whether the met has been done so that you are allowed to enter the terminal. Otherwise, we uh, we would really would like to avoid congestions, of course, uh, uh, on the terminal or uh, with entry or exit. Um, you can check that uh, in the track and trace status in port base, um, whether the, the traffic light is on green and you can enter the terminal. Very important to, to pre-check prior entering the terminal in Vlaanderen and in Amuiden. Um, that is, uh, so once you arrive, can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I, I won't go through all the, uh, all the, all the process flows as, as described. Can you click on the, on the, the bottom part? Yes. So when the unit has arrived at the terminal, you have a four minute window uh, from Dutch customs in order to announce a inspection, whether the unit should have an inspection or not. After the four minute window, uh, after so after gate in plus four minutes, we are allowed to, to, to load the unit on the vessel. Um, that is, uh, the unit will then arrive at the terminal, so I will arrive at the temporary storage facility and will have a trader at, at, at exit status, a custom status, and once it is loaded on board of the vessel, it will have a confirmation of exit status. And that will mean that uh, the, 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 say the document is taken over by the manifest, so the document is cleared and the manifest has a custom status for that particular unit. I would like to hand it over for the next part to you, Mark. Sure, no problem. Jacqueline, can I have the next slide, please? OK, so this becomes an import into the UK now, straight into the next slide. So from the UK point of view, what is the individual role in the imports? First of all, it's important to note that the customs agent must have a destinate connection along with a badge code so that they can use this to assign the unique consignment numbers to. And the customs agent will pre-lodge the arriving goods into the customs people, chiefs, and on raising the UCN can tie up the chief's entry. And we'll come back to that in further detail in a moment. The quickest possible clearance 
that can be done on the temporary storage model is by ensuring that the goods have been declared prior to their arrival from Holland. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be done. You know, the TSF is used by container operators and there's up to 90 days after arrival for goods to be cleared. But obviously on the trailer market, goods are moving far faster. So if the declaration is done prior to the goods arriving, then that declaration and the UCNs could be tied up so that trailers can basically be cleared unless they're due for exam on arrival from the vessel to the terminal. So long as the booking reflects accurately the pre-lodged entry, there should be no issues. A customer, as Lucin mentioned earlier on, needs to advise that they're either using the simplified procedures by booking as a C status or alternatively booking under whatever transit status the goods are moving under. DFDS will always be transmitting manifests after the vessel has sailed immediately into Destinate. So in reality, a vessel that's sailed at 2130, the manifest is in to Destinate in the UK at 2030 UK time. At that point, all the declarations are available and the agent can go in and assign the UCN and begin the clearance work. And of course, if Destinate needs to be amended, if there's an issue with packaging or whatever, it can be done at that stage. Go to the next slide, please, Jacqueline. OK, this might get a little bit repetitive now, but uh, it is important to follow it through. Um, again, I won't repeat the whole thing other than to say that the UCN can be created in Destinate as soon as the manifest hits. So it's really important if you want the swift clearance to have the details of the declaration into the system prior to the manifest being transmitted from Holland or simply put prior to the vessel sailing from Holland. The declarant, the customer's agent, can then claim the UCN and link this into Chiefs. Can you click again, please? And the yellow part, again, is the single most important part on the um, arrival side. Once the vessel has arrived into the UK, Destinate auto updates everything, showing this from the discharge of the unit through to whether the goods have been called for exam or whether they've been cleared. That's the clearance routing which comes from customs. If it's called for exam, then trailers automatically examined by customs at their facilities that are on the ports already. And then if it's already cleared or it's cleared after exam, it's released by Destinate and the goods are no longer on hold. So it means the driver can apply for the trailer and leave the gate immediately. And that's it on the UK import processes. Handing back to the studio. OK, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lucien. Um, now, it wouldn't be a real Brexit webinar if we hadn't had any technical hiccups, just like the real <laughs> process. But I think your message, <laughs> your message was very clear and we've already received some interesting questions. So we will save them for later. First of all, we're going to switch to our representative of the Phoenix with over 5,000 members. They're not all in this uh, webinar, but quite a few, Stefan. So um, um, let's address them and uh, please take the floor. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can get the slides on the screen. Is it okay, so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, Thanks, uh, Edwin, for the invitation, also for the uh, introduction. Uh, just to put one thing right, uh, uh, Fenex has 400 members and TLN combined with Fenex has 5,000 members. So it's a little bit in a different perspective. Um, I know that a lot of Fenex members are present here today, uh, but still for the ones that uh, do not know us, I have added uh, an introduction, introduction slide to give some information about what we do and what our organization stands for. So we are the, the Dutch organization uh, for, for freight forwarders and logistics service providers fin founded in 1900. So over 120 years old already. Um, uh, and we merged in uh, TLN in and combined forces. Um, I have added some of the uh, typical things that we do. Um, it's a lot of lobbying, uh, uh, advising members, and presenting the, uh, the logistics industry in the Netherlands, Europe and worldwide. Um, we also have memberships in uh, different uh, international organizations like CLECAT, which is our European association, 
and FIATA, the International uh, Association. Um, Phoenix is uh, divided into four uh, councils. Uh, uh, of course, I'm responsible for the Customs uh, Council, which is also the most important one uh, uh, we have. Well, this webinar is about the border operating model. It's always nice to talk after Lucia and uh, Mark because I tend to tell the same things as they would usually do, but uh, that's why I have prepared a little bit of a different uh, presentation than, uh, than theirs. Uh, the border operating model is, of course, a very interesting uh, uh, topic. Um, this latest version was published at the 8th of October, uh, which is uh, only two months before the end of the transitional period, so it's a little bit late. Um, the next version is expected by the 1st of July 2021. And um, uh, yeah, in the meantime, several small or a little bit bigger changes will be made to the border operating, operating model. Um, but still, um, yeah, it's a 260 pages uh, counting document and it took me more than a whole weekend to, to get through it. But it's, it's definitely um, advisable to read it. Um, some important uh, observations I, uh, I got from it is, of course, the waiver of the ENDS that was also mentioned by Mark. Until the 1st of July 2021, no ENDS is required in the UK. Um, yeah, th those two next bullets actually are combined, uh, postponement of full declarations uh, and uh, six month deferment of uh, deferred payment of duties, which is, of course, uh, uh, a very uh, interesting thing, which I will uh, go into detail more later. Um, yeah, the f from the 1st of January, uh, there will be physical checks for high risk veterinary and phyto goods uh, on location, so not at the borders. Um, how that's going to work, nobody knows for sure yet, uh, but indeed uh, it's a challenge as well. And uh, what's also nice to mention is that um, from the 1st of January, exit summary declarations will be required immediately, uh, but they are mostly combined together with the export declaration. Uh, actually, that's the same in the Netherlands. If you make an export declaration and you put the security data in there, it's a combined uh, one. Well, the UK faces a lot of a lot of challenges uh, uh, with this Brexit um, story, uh, which you might expect. Um, at this point, it's unknown how many companies will actually use these postponed declarations. Um, it's only for UK uh, importers uh, and um, well, you can imagine that there's also risks involved in, in into, uh, yeah, into uh, deferring the duties a half year later after the import. Um, the deferment of the duties is also on a rolling scale and also the postponed declaration. So if you do an, uh, if you import goods on the 1st of May, you have to uh, file the additional declaration at the 1st of November. Um, they the pre-lodgement and temporary storage model. Uh, companies do have to make a choice or actually it's the port that decides the model. Uh, well, we've seen that uh, uh, the FDS uses ports that tend to use the, uh, the temporary storage model, um, which I think fits best with unaccompanied transport. Uh, I think most uh, uh, port, uh, ferry operators will use uh, uh, pre-lodgement. Although uh, it's also possible for a port to combine both uh, models in one location. Um, yeah, well, uh, that when you use the postponed declaration, it requires only an IORI number at the border, uh, which in my opinion is a big risk of smuggling. Uh, Mark, what do you think about this, this from a UK perspective? I would say you're very, very um, true. It's uh, it's been described by uh, some people as a smuggler's charter. It uh, also opens potential can of worms in the sense that we, as the tra um, ferry operator, have to make our declarations, um, which is why we're asking customers who are booking with simplified de um, procedures to book as a C status, so we can differentiate. But of course, where the uh, two degrees removed and if a customer says yep it's C status and we take their word for it like you say mm. only the EORI number is required and who's going to check it yeah thank you um, well let's see how that works out in practice um, another thing is what well, is a big challenge is that there's not enough customs experts in the UK so I read an, uh, an article in the newspaper this day uh, today that said that there were 50,000 customs experts required well, that's a big number. There's not even so many in 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 whole of Europe now in total, I think. 
So that's that's quite a challenge. Um, so the BCPs, uh, the border control posts, uh, Lucien already mentioned them. Of course, they will also be needed in the UK. Um, well, uh, they're not going to be ready before the 1st of July, uh, which should not be a problem uh, since the veterinary checks will only be applied since the 1st of July or starting from the 1st of July. Um, to be able to use special procedures, you need to be established in the UK. So there's this thing called uh, CFSP, which stands for um, uh, Customs Freight Simplified Procedures. And you have to be established in the UK to be able to apply for this. So CFSP is comparable to our uh, entry in the Declan's Records Declaration, which is, is actually a very simplified procedure that you, uh, um, uh, you register goods in your administration and you file a monthly declaration once a month. Uh, uh, which saves a lot of uh, individual clearances uh, every day. Um, yeah, so I said something about establishment in the UK. Uh, uh, this link that I added uh, gives more uh, explanation about what a, a permanent establishment means. You need to have staff and there need to be, actu there need to be some actual uh, uh, business activities in, in an establishment. Um, and of course, if you want to use direct representation, um, well, um, <coughs> that's only uh, possible uh, for GB registered companies. And um, uh, if, if a customs broker uh, uses indirect representation, then he is jointly and severally liable uh, for the declaration. So it's going to be a challenge to find a customs broker willing to take the risks. And well, you need to uh, gain each other's trust, I think. So this slide um, I will not discuss into detail, uh, but I think it's a very interesting one because it's 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 uh, explaining how the GVMS will work. It's, it was actually made for uh, software developers uh, to be able to build the software around it. Uh, but it gives you details about how exact, exactly the information flows go through the scheme uh, and from one uh, uh, party to the next one. Um, GVMS will be operating from the 1st of January only for NCTS. So if you use NCTS into the UK, um, you can use uh, uh, GVMS to, uh, to make the um, Office of Transit uh, um, uh, Office of Transit melding. What's it, what's it called in the English? Notification. Notification, exactly. Thank you very much. OK, well, we focus on the border operating model today, but the border always has, has two sides. Um, we've been in a meeting with the European Commission. This was organized for the Trade Contact Group, and the Trade Contact Group is actually comparable to the Dutch ODB, um, the Customs Consultative Committee. And there, all the European uh, associations uh, are present, and, uh, well, they, they organized a very interesting uh, meeting about all the legal aspects and all the practical aspects uh, of Brexit. Um, one of the most important things uh, uh, they mentioned is that the European Commission will actually not uh, allow any grace period. So the 1st of January, we have to comply with all the European um, Another thing is about the Common Transit Convention. Uh, I think that will smoothen the border procedure, especially in ports like Calais. Because in Calais, it's it's even quicker than with us. The, uh, the the trucks arrive from the train, and they have to leave immediately. And if you use transit, then uh, it will not slow down the process at the border. Um, another thing is about empty packaging uh, that needs to be declared. Uh, well, the nice thing uh, is that yesterday Customs uh, announced to us that um, this can be do can be done in a simplified procedure. So first they communicated that you have to make customs declarations for all these empty packagings, uh, but now you can use an oral declaration. Uh, I think not even Lucien knows this, this yet, but uh, the ferry operator can uh, mention a special code on the manifest. Uh, and then uh, with this oral declaration, the goods can leave the premises immediately. Uh, this goes for incoming and outcoming uh, empty packaging, of course. Uh, another thing that's interesting is about the proof of union status. So if goods leave before the end of the transition period and they arrive in the UK after that, that then you have to prove the union status. Uh, for goods under 15,000 euros of value, it's not such an, uh, a difficult challenge. 
but if you go over 15,000 euros, then you need to uh, have uh, some kind of a proof. And the most known proof is a T2L document or TTL in Dutch. Um, yeah, another thing is that the SPS checks will be performed immediately from the 1st of January in the UK. Um, veterinary goods have to be checked immediately upon import, so in, in the border. Uh, phytosanitary goods can be checked inland. Um, yeah, and, and final remark from is that deal or no deal, there are going to be customs formalities from the start of January. Only if the UK would, uh, uh, would be uh, staying into the customs union and the internal market, uh, that would mean that um, nothing would change. But unfortunately, they chose not to do so. So about the border control posts, well, uh, Lucien already mentioned something about that. Um, in the Netherlands, the border control posts are actually commercial companies. Um, we have two checkpoints in Waalhaven, uh, we have three at the Maasvlakte, and we have only one at the North Bank. Um, and there's currently one uh, company that's investigating if they can open a checkpoint for live animals. Uh, because there's a lot of race horses going uh, uh, over the channel uh, through the Netherlands now. Um, and they also are investigating if they can do Dale chicks and, um, uh, and eggs. So let's see what happens there. Um, yeah, the NVBA has a shortage of, uh, of official veterinarians. Um, they hired about 20 to be able to perform the import process. But as you can imagine, um, not only in the Netherlands, uh, they are looking for extra veterinarians, but also in Belgium and in France and also in the UK, of course. So I added this slide so I can give you an idea about how the, uh, the locations are. So if you look into your left top, you see the number one. Um, that's the Stena terminal uh, at Hoek van Holland. And that's why I mentioned that, that there must be a BCP in the North Bank, because uh, well, if you look at the distance from the other red uh, sorry, the other uh, number one on the, on the right side of your screen. That's the uh, checkpoint in the Waalhaven, which is very far away. Um, and this slide also gives you an idea about where the uh, individual ferry operators are located. So if, as you can see, they are all spread out over the Rotterdam port area. So I'm getting to my uh, closing remarks. Um, I think that the customs brokers industry will play a key role to be able to manage Brexit. Uh, however, there are also worries because um, we get a lot of signals from our members that um, uh, they are approached by, by companies, big companies even now at this point, only uh, four weeks away from uh, the actual Brexit, in search for a customs broker, also from other countries. And we also hear this from our, uh, our colleagues from over the UK, from Belgium, from France. Um, well, we don't know why they now recently started to prepare, but it is actual, actually a fact and uh, it's a big worry. Um, another um, closing remark from my side is that we advise you to use pre-lodgement in the Netherlands as, as much as possible. This is based on Article 171 of the UCC, so it's actually a legal possibility. Um, if you are an AEO, so it mentions AEOC, but I mean AOS, then uh, you can get the inspection results in advance. So once you pre-lodge your declaration, you know if you have to be checked or not, if you have an inspection. Um, after arrival, you still need to uh, send in a pre presentation notification, uh, uh, which is an extra thing to do. But, uh, well, the advantage is that you know in advance if there's a check or not. And uh, Portbase has solutions to automate this process. So there are actually several services they offer already today to be able to do so. Um, and why I also mentioned it, this is that uh, after the 1st of May in 2021, the declaration will no longer be accepted before arrival of the vessel. And that's because of a, a new uh, process called the container vrijgavebericht or container release notification, which will actually prevent um, uh, prevent declarations to be filed and accepted before arrival of the vessel. And I think it's better to prepare already now than wait until the 1st of May uh, to do so. Yeah, and finally, of course, uh, the, the urgent advice, please get ready for Brexit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan, for your contribution. 
think that was relevant and, and also complementary to uh, what Lucien and Mark said. And uh, we are we are very well on time, and that gives us a lot of um, um, margin for uh, the questions that have been asked by our audience. And um, I would like to start with a question to uh, Lucien. It's a question coming from Luke, uh, Luke Kuiper. And he says, hi, Lucien, you mentioned that DFDS Netherlands has worked on the happy flow. Does that mean that there are exemptions on goods that DFDS accepts or can handle? Yeah, well, that's perhaps a wrong phrase using the happy flow in, in, in that respect. Uh, no, we can handle all kinds of goods as we do nowadays. Uh, so there will, be, will not be an, an exemption uh, not to handle uh, specific goods. The only concern we uh, we do have, and that is also what uh, Stefan mentioned, is about the uh, NVBA inspections, mainly in the Amuda area. Uh, that is not quite clear how we're going to deal with that. So that might mean that for veterinary imports, uh, <coughs> we might find some kind of a solution or we might not have possibilities for imports into Amuda. But that is still under investigation. So in that respect, sorry, happy flow, not another, another correct wording. Uh, we can accept all the type of kind of cargo commodities we do nowadays as well. Okay, Lucien, thank you for that. Then I have a question from Max Gerards uh, to Mark. He asks, once all necessary data has been introduced into Chief, how much time will it take to get permission to pass? Transporters want to see green lights before they start driving to the port, as there is limited space to park and wait there. Could you comment on that, Mark? Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. There is limited space at the port and we have that situation today with trailers waiting to be discharged. Um, the cargo can be cleared before the or as soon as the trailer is actually dropped onto the terminal because if the declaration goes through and it all matches up and there's no exam for that trailer, it will clear on arrival and the information in Destinate and in the app and systems will show that the drivers that the cargo is cleared. However, um, taking that question further, if we're looking at the imports into the UK, a driver who's coming to Felixstowe to collect a trailer will also, in many cases, be bringing either a loaded trailer or an empty trailer down with him. So he's bringing that trailer down regardless, and then he'll be waiting for the trailer to come off the next vessel. And the anticipation, of course, will be that it will be cleared immediately. If there is any hold on it, of course, then the driver would have to wait. Okay, thank you. Um, if I don't see any hands from the the, uh, the the person who asked the question, I, I, uh, I assume that your answer is clear, Mark, and I move on to the next one. The next one is from Astrid van den Homberg, and she has a question. I think it's addressed to Stefan. What about transit documents to only use the land bridge UK to cross over? So it's actually transport EU to EU. Can anyone provide me with an agent in Ireland? My concern is transport from Ireland to the mainland. Is that something for you to address, Stefan? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you can, of course, use a T2 document to uh, to, to, to get the, uh, the land bridge. Um, and the T2 document can then be closed in Ireland without an uh, extra declaration because the goods are in free circulation. Um, I don't know if someone can write down your email address, but I'll get you in contact to our uh, sister organization in Ireland in Dublin. And they will probably be able to help you. Well, that sounds like a good proposal, uh, Stefan. And uh, Jacqueline has all the, uh, the information, so Great. we can get in touch uh, with Astrid later on. Then I have a question from Carl Timmis uh, to Mark Woodard. What is your process supporting transit movements specifically arriving into the UK from Holland, Mark? Oh, is it possible you can just clarify that when you say under transit? Are you talking about um, office of destination, office of departure? Well, I guess it's office of destination. Well, let's see if we can get Carl uh, on the microphone um, right That'd now. Be good. Yeah. Hello, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, it was really supporting um, because we understand that GVMS is only uh, uh, effectively uh, on the 1st of January using supporting transit um, and obviously mainly centered around uh, Dover Straits. But as you're using Destinate, 
uh, there's some issues in terms of how the transit form, and particularly if we're moving unaccompanied, how, what is the process? Do we hand a document? Do we send it to you electronically? Do we enter it into GVMS? Well, that's a really good question, because if you put it into the GVMS, it won't work through the TSF in the uh, early days because um, it's not linked in. But in Felixstowe, it'd be a manual process if you're talking about the TADs, which I think is where you're going with that, is it not? It is, yeah. Yeah, no, and that is it's still up for question because each UK border force seems to be doing its own thing. Um, if you take Felix, though, for example, there are three separate terminals. Um, Dooley's the railroad terminal, and you have Langard and Trinity as the, as the two container terminals. And it's even harder then to find how you're going to carry the TADs for the containers over to customs because border force don't have representation on the port. They're based at customs house 24 seven outside of the port. So the question arises, if you've got rapid moving cargo, how you get the TAD from the trailer or the ship, dependent on whether it's accompanied or unaccompanied, to customs. Customs do their business with it. You go back and collect it, bring it back to the office and how a driver then collects it. With the accompanied, of course, UK border force do turn up on arrival of the vessel to do certain checks. So the Accompanied ones can go straight through and have them stamped, but we're still in discussions about the unaccompanied because it's a very good point. And to be honest, at the moment, if I was a customer, I'd be thinking, well, why would I put it through manually if I can't get it stamped quickly? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait to see if you've got any more information uh, as we go through December. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure we will. All right, then moving on to the next question from Gerrit van der Luyt to Stefan. Where will the physical check take place for non-perishable goods? We send our T1 to Manchester. Manchester has to make a pre-clearance and send this with the T1 to the UK Customs. If they want to check the goods, where will they do it? At the border or in our warehouse in Manchester? Well, I think that's actually a question for the UK side, but uh, for as far as you I can know... You take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if, if, if I look into the border operating model, then you see that the UK is going to open several inspection locations inland. And my guess will be that they will be uh, performing those inspections over there. Do you agree, Mark? It, 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 it'll be a mix. It, we're mix. talking about the, uh, the T docs on here. I mean, in, in Felix, though, they already have everything they need to do it. But if the clearance needs to be done elsewhere, then depending upon the document that can be arranged. And as you say, there are inland clearance facilities. OK, yep. thank you both. <clears throat> um, staying with Stefan, I have a question from uh, Ola Antonis for you. Do you have an overview of the ports in the UK? Maybe that's also a question for Mark, I don't know. Um, that will use either pre-lodgement or the temporary storage model. Is that already uh, defined and clear? Yeah, there is already a link, but I don't think that every individual port is already in there. So that's updated regularly by uh, by UK uh, government. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. <laughs> no, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. Some ports will not do both. Some ports will insist on doing both and some ports will say, why would I introduce a different model? Because what? it's not a simple matter of just, for example, um, if a port that's operating under TSF today, um, it's a case of how you actually gear the GVMS into the existing system because you still have to put it through an, the, the inventory system in that port because of the way it links into exams, how a trailer or a container is called for exam, how it's cleared through the communications. I know in Felix, though, MCP are having a lot of difficulty figuring how GVMS can swing in to Destinate to match up with everything in the way that Destinate does today. Yeah, and there there is indeed an online uh, overview uh, uh, of which ports will uh, apply which model now. So I think we can yes. share it after the uh, the meeting. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Then then I would like John van Goor to come in. He has asked two questions, and especially on the first one on uh, empty packaging, I would not want to uh, uh, put the question wrong. So John, could you come in via the microphone and ask your question directly, please? And then followed by the next one you have put in as well. Yes, uh, good, good morning. Um, Stefan mentioned that uh, there will be uh, 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 an exception for the empty packaging for the import in, uh, into uh, to the Netherlands, where there's a code to be mentioned on the manifest, and so there's no clearance needed. 
But how does it work then from the UK side? Uh, does there uh, still needs to be issued an export declaration? Do you want me to take that? Please, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you said earlier, Stefan, you said Lucid probably hasn't heard this yet. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether Lucid had or not. I heard it in a call last night. I did. I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, I heard it in a call last night, but on the UK side, that clarity has not been forthcoming. You know, from what we understand today, it does need a declaration and it will need that declaration via the UCR to get onto a terminal. So it's something which you've thrown us there and which we heard last night and we wait to see what the UK government's got to say about it as well. Yeah. Okay, By the way, you. it doesn't really, it's not a problem if, if we uh, use an oral declaration and does it make it mandatory to uh, uh, use the oral procedure on the other side as well. So if UK says you need to file a declaration, we can still uh, use oral declarations. And it's not definitely um, mandatory to use uh, the same procedure on both sides of the channel. Oh no, so it's only from one side at this moment, but maybe yeah. it will be also from both sides. But this Let's will hope so. Discussed. Let's hope so, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope, yeah. And, and in Belgium, it's the same procedure, yeah? They also I, I use heard already, yeah. yeah. Correct. So John, please, you're welcome to ask your second question as well, which was for either Mark or Lucien, I understand. Yeah, my question is because uh, uh, for, for transit declarations to uh, the continent from the UK, uh, for example, for Germany or France, um, is it best to start this MRN transit already in the UK or, uh, or from the port arriving in the, in the Netherlands, for example? Shall I, Mark? Um, yeah, if you get, if you get to VAT, please yeah. do. <laughs> no, no, but say the, 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 the process, and I, we, didn't, we didn't mention that during our presentation for transit, so import transit documents uh, into, into Holland, let's say, and, and the, the, the start from, from, from let, Manchester to Germany, it's quite a different process uh, for in, in, in port base. We will, we will scan the, the, the manifest and all the transit documents on the manifest. We will provide the Dutch customs a barcode list and they will scan the, 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 the transit documents in the system, in the NCTS system. And there we will process already the MIT, in fact, uh, for, uh, on behalf of you as a customer. So there you don't need to do a MIT and that's done by us via special code and scanning that particular document to the document uh, to the cost Dutch customs prior arrival of the vessel in gliding or in Uyde. Yeah, uh, thank you. But my question was more that let's say it's uh, it's uh, uh, UK goods and an export declaration is issued in the UK and then uh, it has to go to, to Germany in transit. And then the question is, uh, is it best to already start the MRN transit in UK or to start it from the port? So the previous document will then be the manifest. Perhaps you can answer as more a customs expert, Stefan. Yeah, I, th I think it's best to open the transit already in the UK because then you don't have to wait here until the, the, the shipment has arrived to file the, the ongoing or, or start the new uh, transit declaration here. And the process actually goes very quick. Yeah, the, so the, the ferry operator will mention the special code and you can leave immediately. Yeah. There's only one thing about the, the printed TAD. Yeah, you need to, to have the printed TAD somewhere. Yeah, correct. That, that that's the, might the, be a, the, the big the biggest problem. That that might be a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know if that I, uh, in Germany they sometimes the toll the German toll sometimes asks for it. So uh, better keep it with you when you go to Germany. Yeah. Okay. If if I could just come in again, going back to the previous question, I've actually got a text come in um, from a colleague who's just received some guidance from the HMRC. So it's hot off the press, if you like. I'll just read it. We can confirm that a physical declaration would not be required as the UK would regard the entry of the packaging on a port inventory system or simple disembarkation in a railroad context as declaration by conduct. So it doesn't look like we will have to do the physical one and oral one will be sufficient based on that. Yeah. Well, thanks for that scoop, uh, Mark. And let's move on to the next question. Now, this one is for Stefan, but also uh, the others are very welcome to add their view. It's a question for Martijn Oskam. Um, would you have an idea on the current status of the Northern Ireland protocol? 
as it was part of the withdrawal agreement, it was already valid law and was ensuring that procedures for moving cargo to and from Northern Ireland would continue unchanged for all practical means when the goods are not transported via England, Scotland or Wales. Is this status still reality or is it in danger of being changed due to the possible introduction of the internal market bill? Quite a big question. Wow. Who would like to start off? <laughs> Mark? Mark yeah. I it's, thank you for that. Well, I, knew that was, I knew that was coming my way. Um, ah, dear me. I would say you really want to put that one to the politicians. Um, that's it. Let's go back to where we are with the law on that one. The House of Lords stripped all those provisions out and the UK government, it's up to the then basically to put them back in and put it back to Parliament. So as it stands, that, that law had, or that amendment has fallen and requires to go back into, into the House of Commons to have those amendments stripped out again from the Lords. And we're seeing the political game played out here because the UK's position will be if we don't get a deal, then we have to protect the internal market and they'll put those provisions back in. If they get a deal, then they, they'll just let them fall and they won't push them through Parliament. So I don't think we can really answer that one at the moment. I think there's also going to be published another border operating model, especially for the Northern Ireland uh, situation. Yeah, because it's, it's so messy now. Yeah. A lot of questions remain there. Yeah, definitely. But that's, that's also, that's not only our opinion, but that's also the, the worry of Dutch Customs and also of the European Commission, mm. that there's still a lot of unclarity about Northern Ireland. Shall we leave it at that? Yep. Then moving on to Gerrit van der Luyt, who has a question for Stefan. Do we have to send our information, CMR, T1 or T2, invoices to UK Customs on email address gbimports.eu27? Or is this only for UK companies who will do the import declaration? Do you know that, Stefan? That's actually the first time that I heard of this email address. It's not mentioned in the border operating model that I'm, I'm pretty sure about. No, it's not. <laughs> it isn't, is it? Is it? No. no. I haven't seen it there. No. But um, he said the T1. Well, maybe Gerrit can come in. If he's still there, then uh, please put on your mic and perhaps you can give a little bit more clarification on your question. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yep. very well. Okay, okay. Um, I, I get these uh, two email addresses for uh, the import and the export uh, through the UK or from the UK, uh, but I'm not sure if we have to uh, send our information to uh, UK Customs or do, do they do that from uh, England? It's only for England or it is also for us? Um, maybe, maybe uh, the uh, company who's making the uh, import or export declaration, they have to send th this information to the email address I gave you, but I'm not sure. That's uh, yeah, that's that's my question. Otherwise, I have to go to my uh, office in in uh, back to my office in uh, the UK and ask them if it is for. Uh, uh, for all of the companies uh, from Europe and the UK, or only for the UK? So is uh, who's filing the import declaration? Is it your UK uh, office? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, <coughs> I would expect that only the UK office that files the import declaration would have to send the documents to customs uh, on, re uh, uh, on request, yeah, as okay, it works okay. in the Netherlands as well. But um, okay. What I will do is I'll, I'll write the question down and I'll double check with the border delivery group because it's okay. an interesting one. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll yeah. come back to you on this one. Thanks, sir, Stefan. We know each other, so no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Then moving on to a, a question of Max Gerards for Mark. Mark, sometimes ships in the UK seaports are supplied with a mix of technical spare parts, lubricants, cabin stores and a pellet with mixed food and beverage products by a Dutch ship supplier. Until now, these goods are already customs cleared as the goods leave the EU in order to be fully consumed, used on board of the sea ship. 
after the 1st of January, how can we cross UK territory in transit to reach the ships in Southampton, Liverpool, etc.? We did not find out the right UK transit documents yet. I don't think I can give you an answer on that myself. We really need a customs expert. And I think maybe Stefan might better shed some light, possibly. I'm going to have to pass the buck on that one. Sorry. Please, please repeat it. OK, um, here we go again. Um, it's a complex one, isn't it? So ships in it UK is. seaports are supplied with a mix of technical spare parts, lubricants, cabin stores, and a pallet with mixed food and beverage, beverage products by a Dutch ship supplier. Mm -hmm. Until now, these goods are already customs cleared as the goods leave the EU in order to be fully consumed and used on board of the sea ship. Yeah. Now, after the 1st of January, how can we cross UK territory in transit to reach the ships, for example, in Southampton and Liverpool, etc. We did now we did not find out the right UK transit doc, transit documents yet. No, I'm, my guess is that you need to to file a transit declaration, which you uh, end at the moment that you uh, deliver the the goods to the ship, because they've already been um, uh, been exported from the European Union and not imported in the UK because the vessel is. Yeah. They they are for uh, sea use, um, um, but this is this is one of those very. Can can I hear an echo? Yeah, I think yeah. someone has his microphone uh, on not muted. Okay, well no problem. Um, but this is one of those typical, uh, very specialistic questions that I think we should uh, uh, address to be sure to uh, to the UK government. But my guess is to make a T1 document starting from the, U, uh, from the EU, which goes into the UK and uh, you deliver the goods to the vessel with the T1, where the T1 is closed on the outgoing manifest. That's my, my, uh, my guess. Okay. Yeah, I can support that. This is Luke Kuiper. The, the, this is the normal way to handle it with a T1. Yeah. Or coming from free circulation, a T2. And... Uh, if I may, this is Max. Uh, will the UK authority in the port of departure still be able to, to clear or to confirm exit on this T1? I don't see why not. It's being done now Time to die. already. Yeah. Uh, but some of these ports, the, the customs is not there. They are uh, at the distance of uh, 20, 30 kilometers. So that's quite complex. But I can speak after in detail with Stefan. Yeah, I think uh, because they use GVMS to be able to uh, report the notification of uh, transit when they enter the UK. Um, but yeah, I don't think that you have to close the T1 procedure with that in the same way. But let's discuss later indeed. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you all. Um, I've got a question from Jesse Cohen, and he asks, is a T1 document required to drive with veterinary goods from the terminal to the inspection point in the Netherlands? Uh, you can either use a T1 uh, combined with the um, GGB document, which is the veterinary document, or you can use uh, an import declaration, uh, but then the import declaration will not be released uh, after the veterinary check has been performed. So either one of the two options is possible. OK, yeah. that seems very clear. Yeah. And then I had one follow up question from Ola Antonis um, when we talked about the uh, models in the different ports. He, he asked if we can supply the link from the UK government where the different models are shown. I think we, we, we will be able to, to give that share. link yeah. right? yeah. with, the, with the presentations. Yeah. And that brings us to the uh, the very last uh, question that we had. I'm I'm checking in the chat. If anyone thinks I missed the question, please raise your hand now. Um, if not, then I think we're going to wrap up uh, well before time, which is not a bad thing because we are all busy enough. So I think during the last 18 minutes, we learned from our speakers how to simplify the complex landscape of the border operating model and which rules to follow for a smooth transport after the 1st of January. 
And although the devil is in the detail and the detail is very late in this process, we should be able to offer the best possible service via Rotterdam for our customers. I, I really would like to end by, first of all, thanking all our speakers for their very clear and interesting contributions. And of course, also the, uh, the participants in our audience uh, for staying with us for uh, almost 90 minutes. Um, I wish you good luck in the new year, but for now, I also wish you happy holidays, safe holidays with your family and uh, a good Brexit, almost of all. Bye bye to everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you all. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>